Hi, I'm Ravi Samlar, editor for Morningstar India. Today we have with us Chintan Mehta, Associate Director, Capital Markets and Asset Allocation, part of Morningstar's Investment Management Group. He will talk to us about the importance of asset allocation while investing. Welcome, Chintan. Hi, Ravi. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. So, uh, Chintan, uh, as equity markets are on a roll right now at all time high, there could be a tendency for you know first time retail investors to go overboard on equity exposure by you know ignoring other asset classes. So, could you share your perspective on the dangers of having exposure to a single asset class like equity? Sure, that's an interesting question. Uh, you know, like we have all experienced, markets have seen a tremendous rally recently. If you look at the broad market equity index, which is S&P BSE 500, it has delivered a staggering 120% from the March 2020 lows till date. Now, this rally is fueled by foreign inflows and rising retail investor participation. Just to put some numbers into perspective, FPIs have poured in $37 billion into Indian equities, and the trading accounts has risen from around 35 million to 70 million, uh, which was right at the start of 2020. In a very short span of time, the retail investor participation into the Indian equity markets have risen tremendously. You rightly pointed out, there could be a tendency for the first time retail investor to go overboard and equity exposure. This can be explained with a behavioral finance bias, that is overconfidence bias, where one tends to demonstrate prediction over confidence based on the recent market gains, tempting them further to add exposure to equities. Now, there are two major consequences of the overconfidence bias. One, you tend to underestimate risk and overestimate return. And second, you hold a poorly diversified portfolio. If we understand the history of assets, there are strong reasons explaining the drawbacks of having a single asset in a portfolio. Let's consider equities. If you look at the historical periods like tech bubble burst, global financial crisis, and the recent market correction led by COVID, these periods have seen markets correcting anywhere between 30 to 60%. And such events can have an exposure on the investor's uh, investment goal as they, they could witness a significant capital loss. Not just equities, but it is also true for other assets. For example, if one is planning for retirement and has only fixed deposit as a part of its portfolio, the investor runs a risk of eroding wealth if the yield on the fixed deposit or yield on the debt portfolio is consistently lower than the inflation. Another example could be, consider an investor had put money, had, had put 100 rupees in gold 10 years back. Now that would have grown to 192 rupees in uh, this 10-year period, generating an annualized performance of 6.8% versus equity, which would have generated 345 rupees, that is a 13.2% annualized return. Now, on an absolute basis, the actual difference comes up to be around 152%. This clearly highlights the possibility of missing out on growth opportunities over the long term, and the portfolio might not be able to generate enough wealth to meet the financial goal. These are some of the major drawbacks of limiting a portfolio to a single asset. Thanks, Chintan. So, uh, Chintan, uh, can you tell us how many asset classes should an investor, you know, ideally have in the portfolio, and which are these asset classes, you know, uh, to achieve full diversification? Sure. Uh, there's a wide range of asset class available for the investors to look at. One can look at domestic equity, international equity. These are typical growth assets as they offer high growth potential. Uh, one can also look at fixed income, which brings in stability to the portfolio with stable cash flow yield. Uh, then one can also basically look at physical assets like real estate and gold. But it is important to first understand the benefits of having exposure to these assets. Let's consider equities. One can participate in the India economic growth story and growth in corporate earnings. Similarly, by investing into international equities, one can participate in global growth drivers for different markets. And secondly, it also offers hedge against rupee depreciation. In case of debt, it offers stable cash flow yield and helps in reducing the risk in a portfolio. 
a portfolio that depends too heavily on a single factor to drive returns is effectively a forecast of that single factor let me explain this with a simple example returns for a portfolio heavily concentrated in oil stock will depend heavily on the oil price movement such factors often are very difficult and impossible to forecast accurately so investors should aim to diversify their portfolio among different assets in such a way that the returns will be driven by a range of unrelated factors besides one should try and stick to assets which they understand and which they are comfortable with so chintan suppose uh, an investor has you know 100 rupees to invest so how much he should be investing in each of these asset classes and how should he or she decide sure now you know uh, this is the next most important question to address once uh, you have identified uh, available set of asset classes at disposal uh, you know various studies show that asset allocation basically drives 80 to 90% of the portfolio's performance over the long term thus making it critically important to get this step right uh, the approach that one can consider uh, is is top down where uh, one can first identify the appropriate investment horizon and a goal that one is planning for it is also important to first understand willingness towards risk for instance have you invested in equities in the past what was your reaction when the markets corrected uh, in march 2020 to the tune of around you know 35 odd percent did you add more equities to your portfolio or did you sell equity allocation now something like this will clearly help to understand how much volatility or how much capital loss you are willing to accept and that will basically help in determining your willingness towards risk accordingly this helps in defining the broad asset class split between equity and debt how much should be allocated to equity or how much should be allocated to debt for instance someone who has got a short investment horizon of say 1 to 3 years and a pretty low willingness to take risk would typically look at allocating to equities in the range of 5 to 15% and not beyond that but someone who has experienced markets for a long time has got a long investment horizon of say 7 years and beyond and has a much higher willingness to take risk will look at a higher allocation to equities anywhere ranging from say 50% to 90% once you have identified that say for example 70% allocation to equities it is what i am comfortable with then the next step is to further divide this 70% allocation to equity into market cap basis what will be the allocation to large cap mid cap and small cap equities coming off from this 70% and to do this one can look at the broad market index which is s&p bse 500 for reference say you know the index basically has roughly around 80% allocation to large caps 15% to mid caps and 5% to small cap now one can look at this as a starting point to divide the overall equity allocation that one is comfortable with in the example that we just discussed 70% allocation at a broad asset allo class asset class level can be divided into large mid and small cap split in the range of say 56% can go to large cap around 10% can go to mid cap and 4% can go to small cap equities and this can typically be your target allocation once this is done a series of back testing and forward looking analysis needs to be done to test this different combination of asset mixes and identify the optimal asset allocation when when i say optimal asset allocation it simply means a portfolio or a mix of asset classes which offers highest return for a given level of risk and lowest risk for a given level of return as warren buffett once famously said investing is simple but not easy one can always seek help of financial advisor or investment expert who can build a multi asset portfolio since there's lot of science and art that goes into defining the asset allocation that will provide a right balance to the investor uh, thanks indran for that uh, detailed explanation so uh, once an investor has invested in his portfolio Uh, when should he or she be you know rebalancing the portfolio and what should be the frequency of it sure so that's another important element which is part of the portfolio construction process rebalancing 
Now, one of the key elements that investor must consider while managing a portfolio is when and how frequently they should rebalance the portfolio. The rebalancing also serves the purpose of being disciplined with investing. You know, it helps to sell when the equity markets have rallied significantly or the valuations are high, and it helps to buy when the markets. Have corrected, or the overall allocation to equity in a portfolio is lower than the target allocation. While this subject is both important and hotly debated, uh, we have found no academic work to support the view that there is an optimum rebalance period. We believe that rebalancing requires significant thought and should be done in a way that is consistent with the market valuation, based on one's view on the markets. Rebalancing activity can be purely ad hoc in nature. For example, if one thinks that the markets are overvalued, and if the portfolio running is running a higher allocation to equity, then one can basically think of cutting down exposure to equity based on their view on the markets, and vice versa. For example, someone who starts with 50% equity and 50% debt portfolio, and after a few months. If the allocation changes to 55% equity and 45% debt, based on the equity market performance, should the investor consider rebalancing the portfolio back to the target allocation? Well, it may seem like a simple rule, but understanding the market valuations is really important to take an overweight or underweight asset class call. That's where an investment expert or or financial advisor can step in and help investors review and monitor their portfolio. On an ongoing basis. Having said that, for simplicity purpose, investors can also look at rebalancing the portfolio once in a year. However, one should be mindful of the unnecessary transaction cost and tax implication of frequently rebalancing the portfolio. This can have a significant bearing on the portfolio performance over the long term. Okay, thanks, Intel, uh, for uh, sharing this detailed explanation. Uh, for Morningstar, I am Ravi. Thanks for watching.